afternoon everyone. I'm Alicia Stemper. I'm the PIO for Sheriff Charles Blackwood. Now that this case is officially in Superior Court, we are finally able to hold this media briefing. Thank you very much for coming and thank you very much for the patience you've afforded us since that dark day back in September. Um, Assistant District Attorney Jeff Neiman is going to start us out. His name is spelled N-I-E-M-A-N. And after he speaks, he will introduce you to Sheriff Charles Blackwood, B-L-A-C-K-W-O-O-D. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Good afternoon. My name is Jeff Neiman. I'm an assistant district attorney here in Orange County. I'm here with Sheriff Charles Blackwood. I'm here with Sheriff Charles Blackwood, and this morning, the clerk of court officially transferred the juvenile suspect in the recent double homicide of Devin Clark and Lyric Woods into Superior Court, where he will now face those charges as an adult. Sheriff Blackwood and I share the community's grief and outrage. This is a horrible loss for Devin and Lyric's family and friends, and a tragedy for the entire community. The suspect is Isaiah Ross. He is 17 years old and he lived in Mebane at the time of these crimes. We have appreciated your patience you have afforded us, and frankly, we understand why at times this case has tried your patience. This has been very hard. Thankfully, our community, is, community does not have much experience with juvenile murder cases, and I'm sure it's difficult to accept how little information my office and the sheriff's office is allowed to share in this type of case. But the law is the law, and the sheriff and I have both sworn a do, have a sworn duty to uphold it. Now I'm going to turn it over to the sheriff, and he will take you through a timeline. Thank you, Mr. Neiman. Might I add that his office has been extraordinary to work with over these last months. Late Friday night, September 16th, early Saturday morning, September 17th, as you know, Lyric Woods left home sometime during those hours. Her family reported her missing Saturday morning and our deputy spent many hours that weekend attempting to locate her. September 18th, Sunday morning, 1123, Devin Clark's family reported him missing to the authorities in Alamance County. September the 18th, later that day, just before 3 p.m., we received word that two men found the bodies of a male and a female along a power line access off Buckhorn Road. These victims were later confirmed to be Devin and Lyric. Because several people living near where Devin and Lyric were discovered heard gunshots early Saturday morning, we believe that's when the murders occurred. September 20th, Tuesday, 48 hours after finding Devin and Lyric, a juvenile petition was secured for Mr. Ross for two counts of first-degree murder. Investigators with my office developed Mr. Ross as a suspect by processing the crime scene and surrounding area to collect and analyze evidence, including forensic evidence. These efforts led to our belief that Mr. Ross is the person responsible for the death of Devin and Lyric. When investigating these murders, we developed the identity of the suspect. We learned Mr. Ross had fled the state early Sunday evening or late Sunday evening, September the 18th. We had reasonably good idea where he was going or where he had gone to and notified law enforcement authorities in Delaware specifically the Delaware Violent Crime Streets, Safe Streets Task Force. Again, that's the Delaware Violent Crime Safe Streets Task Force. Because we knew he was no longer in North Carolina, we felt certain he was no longer a threat to anyone in this area. October the 5th, Wednesday, 18 days after their bodies were located, members of the Safe Streets Task Force were ultimately able to apprehend Mr. Ross. 
We're grateful for their diligence and professionalism during this case. The task force started with the information we had given them about where we believe Mr. Ross went. However, because they could not act on that information, they had to first confirm his location and then seek search warrants to enter the residence and detain him. Several days after his apprehension, Mr. Ross arrived in North Carolina and entered the secure juvenile detention facility in another county. Turn it back over to Mr. Neiman. Thank you, Sheriff. Juvenile law differs from regular adult criminal court in some important and significant ways. As such, it has different procedures and different terminology. For example, the charging document is called a petition, not a warrant. When the person is apprehended, the term is detained, not arrested. We held a hearing in court on Tuesday, October 18th, at which time we announced our intention to transfer the case to Superior Court a process allowed under juvenile law in cases where a 16 or 17 year old juvenile is charged with a serious felony such as murder. Once a juvenile receives notice of my office's intent to transfer the case to Superior Court, the juvenile has a five day notice period to prepare for a transfer hearing. That occurred and then on October 25th, a transfer hearing was held at which the juvenile court judge ordered transfer this case to adult superior court. Then the juvenile was allowed a 10 day period during which he could potentially appeal that transfer. That period ended Friday afternoon at 5 p.m. Mr. Ross's attorney did not file an appeal and the clerk of superior court made the transfer first thing this morning. This is why we are now able to release his name again, Isaiah Ross, 17 of Mebane. Although Mr. Ross's case is now in adult court because of his age, he must still be held in a youth facility under secured custody order. At present, he is being held without bond. Authorities in Delaware have charged two people with harboring a fugitive for their role in assisting Mr. Ross after he fled from North Carolina. Those cases will be adjudicated in the court system in Delaware. Sheriff Blackwood and I want to once again express our sincere condolences to the family and friends of Devin and Lyric. We hope our community will continue to support them. Thank you. So at this point, personnel with the Sheriff's Office have concluded their investigation and the case has been turned over to the District Attorney's Office for prosecution. We have time for one or two questions, but I want to kind of warn you in advance, there's not a lot of other things that we can tell you. We cannot risk jeopardizing this case. And also, I want to just sort of forecast that going forward, this, this kind of, this conference today is our chance to speak with you, but we really won't be allowed to release further details going forward, also because we need to protect the integrity of the case. Um, we have appreciated your patience and your understanding. Um, Um, I, I don't think the specifics are something we can talk about at that point, at this um, point, sorry. And what can you share of motive? Why these two keys were pulled in this way? Yeah, um, we have some um, theories and we have some evidence, but we can't speculate as to motive at this time. And um, another important thing to forecast is, I don't know that we'll know in this case, or that we'll be, that, that we will find out collectively Unfortunately, a lot of times cases go all the way through the court system and even get convicted. But if evidence convicts and um, the defendant does not speak, we don't always know the motive. And we, that may very well be what happens in this case. It may not be made public. We can only suppose um, it was at a time that was consistent with evidence that that's probably what was occurring. Can you say anything about how these keys were near each other? Um, we cannot at this time.
I know very little about Mr. Ross, but I do not think he is from here, I, or had not been living here for a very long time. He does have family in the area, uh, if I'm accurate. off on that. Yeah. And can we also talk about, uh, I know there have been discussion about some rap music that he may have released shortly after the murders. Can you all comment on those? No, that's not part of the investigation into the murder itself. So. I don't want to. I don't want to comment on that currently. Yeah. I guess, Sheriff, could we hear from you about this case and the kind of resources it took to get to this point, and just the nature of this case? Is this unprecedented in your law enforcement experience? To answer your last question first, no, it's not unprecedented. To answer your your first question last, um, the entire resources of my office and the district attorney's office and partnering law enforcement agencies were used and we're grateful for their help and the partnership. And it speaks volumes about partnership in law enforcement. And do you, I imagine you believe you all have strong evidence that this was the correct suspect? Yes, ma'am. Could you elaborate on the strength of that evidence? I'm very confident. Don't want to speculate on that right now. Okay, um, so do we know the next court hearing? Yes, uh, November, November 15th and 16th, that session. Okay. We'll have a more specific time. We'll have a more specific time as we get closer, but n November 15th or 16th will be the next session of court where any matter in connection with this case will be, um, addressed at that time. So thank you all again for coming. Appreciate it very much. Take care.